any time you try to live your values or you try to stay pure, there are things that are going to come in the way. But those are the times as leaders that you have to have the courage to stay true to who you are. So as a corporation, as a leader, do you really have the luxury to be anti-woke in today's world? I don't think so. Yeah, it's so great to see you. It's always good to see you. It's been a long time. So much has happened since we've last saw each other. It's crazy. At a dinner like this. I know. Right? Yeah. The world has changed. It's just really great to get to spend time with yeah. you again. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Like, you and I talk a lot yeah. about authenticity. Yeah. In this case, the authenticity of, of organizations. Mm -hmm. Particularly over the last several years, given the social unrest and, and everything else that's come right. at them. Right? We hear so much about... Mm -hmm. The CEO today has to be an activist, has to right. be uh, a chief uh, comforter, mm -hmm. also has to be prepared for the fights that are happening outside, inside. Right. So is, is there a role for all companies to get involved in everything? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. How do, we, how do, you, how do you help organizations yeah. navigate that? Yeah, I mean, I, if you stand for everything, then you actually don't stand for anything. Yes, you should speak out on things that have something to do with your business, right. that you have a business talking about. But if it's something that's so far removed from your business and your people, you're not really going to be credible anyway. Right. And oh, by the way, be really transparent with your employees so that they understand, I know why we're speaking out on this and I know why we aren't speaking out on that. I think about that, especially in the context of uh, ESG, right? Yeah. But what does it really mean right. Right, to the average person? Mm -hmm. And how do you explain ESG to to folks who don't live in Washington, D.C.? And that's right. not to suggest that others are, but mm -hmm. we draw a lot of terms around in this town. Whether you're in Washington or somewhere, somewhere else, if you aren't seeing the social issues that are going on, then your, your head is under a rock somewhere. Right. And we know by looking at the different studies that are going on that employees are no longer looking to or trust government to solve these issues. They are looking to their companies and to business as a whole to solve social issues. Right. right, And it really is up to leadership to say, here's where we're going to take a stand. This matters to our business because it matters to people. Right. Or it matters to our business because the, this is in our hometown, right? or, or whatever it is. Right. But I think about when CBS decided to stop selling cigarettes or tobacco products. And everybody said, whoa, you're, you're crazy. What are you talking about? And even CDS said, I think that they would lose $2 billion you know, doing it. Once they did that and they said, look, we're a health company. Selling tobacco products is counter to our purpose and to our values. They've continued to make money, not lose money as a result. I think that's a beautiful example. I think at the time, many thought, wow, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and look at the decision that they made and they stood by it. It is important, and, and at the end of the day, a company exists for mm -hmm. the most part to be profitable and to be able to make revenue. Mm -hmm. But then there's this whole other table that gets set. Right. right. And you've got to be able to understand who's sitting at the table with you because now there are members of that table, of that family table, right. um, that should have been at that table before mm -hmm. but weren't. Right. But I want to get to that because I'm getting hungry. Like okay, you. yes, of course. So we should check this out. Let's uh -huh. go in Nazca. What a uh -huh. great restaurant. And um, really excited. Do you like Peru bean too? I love Peru This is your first food. time here, right? It's my first time here, yes. yes. Yeah. So you, you've been here many times, right? Yes. So, so I am going to exercise my independent woman choice and let you <laughs> choose what we have this, this afternoon. Great. How did you start to engage in these issues that you today help some of the most uh, powerful and influential companies and leaders to sort of grapple with? How, where did that start? As you know, I've been a cheerleader most of my life, and I started um, when I was 12, and I tried out for cheerleader in middle school. And uh, I put my, my whole heart into it. It was the first time I'd ever tried out. 
And when all was said and done, I made the team as the fourth alternate. And um, the sponsor, thank you very much. Um, the sponsor, because they weren't called coaches then, um, also was my math teacher. And in a short period of time, she put me on the team. And I asked her, I, I was thrilled of course, but I asked her, why did she do that? Why did I skip ahead of other people? And what she said to me was, um, Charlene, you're very talented, but you're black, and I thought you would be a troublemaker. That was a defining moment for me, because that was the first time that I realized that being black was not a good thing, that it was a problem. Yes, of course. Oh, thank oh, you. This all looks so you. wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and so it was. It I'm was, just sitting here. I know. Because you cause, like our old late friend John Lewis says, mm -hmm. so much trouble, so <laughs> much good trouble. That's what. But we all have stories. Right, right. When we're very young and we're confronted and, with mm -hmm. what it means to be who you are naturally. Right. And you it start, shapes everything exactly. for the rest of your life. Right. You be who God created you to be. Right. Understand the world that which you are walking in. Right. Um, and understand the community in which mm -hmm. you're in. Um, but always be, as you said at the very start of our conversation, authentic. Yes, be authentic. To yourself. Be the best version of you right. that you can be. And the people that you really need to understand that and right. accept it well. That's right. If you do nothing, if you just leave, nothing changes. Right. But if you stay right. and you fight the good fight, as they say, you have a much better chance of changing someone. And if you change one leader's mind, then you change the minds and the, the outcomes of everybody that they touch as uh, professionals and leaders where we are today in, in the organizations, um, but the, those that we work mm -hmm. with uh, are constantly uh, being confronted right. by a lot of those challenges, which is why I'm very proud of the work that you know that we're doing with, right. with our equity and justice practice. Now, have you been paying attention to what's going on with education lately? In the news mostly is in Texas where they're trying to take DE&I out of consideration in hiring. I've seen it from a broader standpoint about um, institutions mm -hmm. and, and, and attacking institutions. Yes. Um, and you have all of these issues that we've been talking about mm -hmm. uh, shaping and impacting this control and this battle right. for changing the institutions that are imparting mm -hmm. what we can read what our laws are gonna be, what companies can and cannot do, funding, and so forth. Two or three years ago, it was everybody wanted to have a right. DEI leader and DEI yeah. program, DEI this, and I'm curious, because what we've seen in the last several years, after being at a high of, of giving in right. this country on these issues among corporations and the statements and so on, um, that that has really dissipated. But what I wonder is, what we're seeing creeping in is not a lack of commitment to DE&I, but an increase in anti-blackness, an increase in anti-LGBTQ+, and that is what really concerns me. Because when you think about what's happening in Florida, you think about what's happening in Texas, and you think about what's happening in other areas, there are very specific groups of people that are being negatively impacted at the same time that companies are saying, DNI is still really important to us. Right. It's a, it's a constant path that we're walking. Right. We're constantly engaged mm -hmm. uh, in, in this work. Um, which makes me really proud of the work that we're doing with our with our teams. Absolutely. Uh, and the number of leaders that are on the International Advisory mm -hmm. Council, mm -hmm. it's really an incredible group of, uh, of, of men and women who bring rich and diverse, enormous perspective from all aspects of industry, all sectors, and one, that was one of the first things I experienced when, um, when I joined APCO, 
was the launching of the Inclusivity Accord and the um, and the event on um, Accelerate What's Right, which was mostly virtual. Right. When it was over, I had tears in my eyes because for the first time I felt that I was in a corporation that was as focused on improvement internally as externally. And what's great is that we can take that to clients and it's we're not just saying to our clients, try this because we think it works, right? right? We're right. saying, we're doing this internally and this is what we're seeing. You can do the same thing that fits within your company and make progress externally and internally and that's when it matters when you can pull those two together it's I real that. i love that well let's do let's accelerate this right by digging into yes, the food yes, absolutely. that we have yes. and uh, Cheers. and enjoy this yes. delicious chicken thank you for lunch. thank you mm -hmm.